Yeah, I'm uh, Robbie Gass. I'm the farm manager and soil specialist at Refeed Farm. My whole life has been involved in farming. Uh, soil science hit me when I was doing a master's in organic farming in Scotland and I refined it with uh, soil food web studies with Elaine Ingham's Soil Food Web School. So the Davis did field trial. Basically it's the field straight over the road from Refeed and it was an intention of asking David, the owner, whether we could use some of his land to test the viability of various methods of organic applications for growing silage for cattle for the dairy farm, specifically in the Langley BC area, which has its own challenges weather-wise. To do weed control, which unfortunately this time we didn't get right, and soil climate control, soil moisture, and the soil nutrient supply without fertilizers requires cover crops. You would have a hard time doing it unless you spread a lot of compost all over the field which would not be really a viable option on 100 acres of fields. It's too much. So cover crops is what you use as a tool to feed the soil, feed the soil microbes when they're there, and keep them alive and thriving. Without it, it won't work. The advantages that you get from planting cover crops is you've always got something green growing in the soil which if you don't do, you will remove the habitat for the microbes. They need growing plants to live with. Cover crops, like all other plants, are able to, amongst other things, use the sun's energy through the photosynthesis to produce the exudates in the soil that feeds the microbes. So the cover crop is essential for nutrient cycling. It's also usually containing a mixture of legumes, which can help to fix nitrogen in the nodules on their roots. And if it's a cover crop like we're going to do next season where you actually flatten it, you don't kill it, you just drop it down, then it forms a living mulch. And the importance of having a mulch layer like that is that rain droplets, when they hit the ground, are hitting it at quite a lot of pounds per square inch. So rain causes compaction. But if you've got a whole lot of plant matter, like a mattress on top of the ground, the water hits the mattress and doesn't compact the soil. The water can infiltrate through that mattress and enter the soil and actually end up going in instead of running off and taking the sand with it. With that cover being on there, the evaporation from the sun is reduced because it's shaded the whole time. So you're allowing water in, preventing water damage, and you're retaining the water that's gone in for the crop that you're growing. So those to name a few. <laughs>